preparing for Passover. If you are clapping, clap very well. God bless you. Amen. We'll be taking our text from the book of Exodus chapter number 11. Exodus chapter number 11 beginning from verse number 1. And we are, if God permit us, also going to look at why Passover. Hear this story. I read it in a book some years ago. A man inherited a room somewhere in Ghana. Somewhere in Ghana. A very crafty man. He inherited a room and he was always given the room for people to come and rent. And this was the only room he had. And he had no other place to sleep. He had no family. Some women somewhere he had impregnated and ran away from. So he was living alone. And he will give out the room. People will pay. He will now beg them that where he wants to go was not available yet. That he should allow him some days to squat with them. And those ones will allow him. And he will start all manner of terrible things, disgusting things, you know, making the place uncomfortable for them to leave. They will run away, leaving the house for him. And he did it repeatedly with many people. Until one day, he gave out the room to this particular fellow. He didn't know that this guy had information about him. Then secondly, he did not know that this guy had three brothers. One, a policeman. Another one, a soldier. Another one, also another force. Another paramilitary service. He didn't know. So, the guy gave him the money. He took it. Wanting to play the same trick on the man. And so, on the day the man will come to clear the room, the man came with his brothers. <laughs> All of them wearing their uniforms. And the, this emergency landlord was shocked. He said, ah! <laughs> he wanted to beg the man whenever the man came. But seeing those people, he could not beg. Those one now asked him, what are you still doing here? He couldn't answer them. <laughs> he started packing his things and he ran away. Because for the duration of period when that man's rent was running, he could not stay in that house. So he went to find another victim, a woman. And he moved in with her. So that man was able to enjoy the place he paid for. Why is pastor telling us this story? The man, that landlord, the emergency landlord was a plague. He was a plague in the community and a plague in the life of those people who were renting the room from him. But the higher power came that he could not stand against. And so he had to run away. I welcome you this morning to his presence with that story. Bow your heads. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we bless your name. Daddy, we thank you because every time we call on you, you are God always answer. Be exalted, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Daddy, 
for commanding the Passover. As we go preparing today, Father, speak to us in Jesus' name. Let your name be glorified, Daddy. Open our hearts, O oh Lord. Let us see this Passover the way you want it in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, over to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. When there is a battle that is bigger than you, you need a higher power to destroy that battle. The challenge that you have tried throughout the year and you have not been able to overcome this is the time that battle is destroyed in Jesus name Amen. Exodus chapter number 11 from verse 1 there are 10 verses in all and the Lord said unto Moses they had seen things in Egypt they've gone to Pharaoh severally let my people go Pharaoh refused Pharaoh did not know just like that man that emergency landlord he did not know that God was keeping him for total destruction the battle in your life is heading for total destruction now in Jesus name and the Lord said unto Moses yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt afterwards he will let you go hence let you go from here that is when he shall let you go he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether he will push you out of this place verse 2 speak now in the ears of the people and let everyone every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of a neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold he wanted to pay them for the 430 years of labor that they have served Egyptians sir every taskmaster in your life you will take them as spoil from today in the mighty name of Jesus ah, I thought somebody was shouting in my head And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was a great, was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Verse 5. And, the, and the Moses said, Thus said the Lord, about midnight, I will go out into the midst of of Egypt. Let's hold it here. Now instructions came and bear this in mind as we go in Passover instructions will be coming. Please please wherever you are watching this message all over the world don't miss the instruction. Please, I beg you. Don't miss the instruction. And you will know why. And Moses said unto the people, Thus said the Lord, About midnight will I go into the midst of Egypt. The people were not aware that God could go into the midst of Egypt. To effect their release what God wants to do in your life you don't know how you don't know why even you don't know what you don't know when and hear me you don't need to know all you want is for God to do it Am I correct? Yes. All you want is for God to do it. If you begin to worry about how, why, when, you are becoming God. And since you are not God, and you can't be God, 
let him do his work only obey him just obey the Lord will bless us in Jesus name if you were in Egypt or with the Israelites trying to cross the Red Sea with Pharaoh and his army behind you and the Red Sea in front of you mountain here mountain there and he says march forward even when the sea is parted many of us will still run back is that not so the sea has been parted you can see dry ground many of us will still fear mommy water that we are not seeing many of us will still believe that on that dry ground there can be a shark tell your neighbor obey i can't hear you tell him obey miracle is always inside obedience always inside obedience the lord will bless us in jesus name and all the firstborns in the land of egypt shall die from the firstborn of pharaoh that seated upon his throne even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the mill the one that is grinding corn and all the firstborn of beasts why is god this wicked somebody will ask sir the enemy for him to hands off your matter there is need for a bigger terror than what he is to you praise the lord in the military there's what is called terror tactics that's what is called terror tactics now what terror tactics mean is you put fear in the enemy so much that he will not think of attacking you again that anybody who is talking about attacking you among your enemies his brother will go and report him <laughs> his own mother will go and report him to you say come oh. me i'm not there oh. <laughs> but my son i had him yesterday i don't know whether he was sleeping or he's alive he's awake oh, because i still remember what he did to us last month he said this he said this come and catch him now <laughs> you know why they do it so that that person will not bring you another disaster upon their head that is terror tactics do you think the people that will go to a community this terrorist they kill 25 allow the others to run away do you think they don't know what they are doing picture it 300 people come to a community in the midnight they kill 25 leave others you think they are not wise they know what they are doing that's what terror does they leave those other people one so that those ones will run so that those ones will run to other villages and tell those villages that these people are coming run so before they come to that new village everybody has vacated the village it is economical for them he saves them manpower. He saves their bullets. You understand? He gives them a free community. Free. So God knew that what will shake Egypt is the killing of the firstborns. Whatever our God needs to do, that we announce our release our God will do it this time in the mighty name of Jesus. Talk to him, Father. Hey, Father. Whatever you need to do, look at me. Father, whatever you need to do, that we announce my release as I go into this Passover. Father, do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you need to do, Daddy, that we announce my release as I go into this Passover. Father, do it in the mighty name of Jesus. 
in jesus mighty name we have prayed verse 7 and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of egypt such as there was none like it nor shall be like it evermore when many christians today when they talk about pray for your enemies they give example that jesus prayed for his enemies those people that nailed him to the cross and majority of people that say it are our fathers they are our fathers in the lord i am too small to argue with those babas so i always keep my mouth shut but me myself i know that those enemies the reason why jesus was blessing them was because they were helping jesus the purpose of jesus coming was to come and die for the sins of mankind those enemies helped him facilitate his purpose but the purpose of me coming is not to come and die for the sins of mankind me i don't know about you Understand? so whoever wants to now kill me or destroy god's purpose in my life ah i better report that person to my god sir the affliction that needs to locate your enemies that will make them to hands off your matter I say it, locate them now in the mighty name of Jesus. So he said there will be big cry all over Egypt. Sir, picture when you see people that are suffering under affliction. If a bigger affliction, just look at for example now, you put somebody in jail. You put somebody in jail. And the person that is in jail, you now realize, maybe you are the prison warder. You now realize that there is a war coming. There is an attack coming. Now, will you wait to make sure that the prison inmate does not escape? Will you stay there and there is an attack coming? Will you keep him from running? Sir, you run first. Is that not so? <laughs> so that the guy will now sort out himself too. If he decides not to run, that's his own problem. As you are running, the guy may call. He say, hey, Egbo, Egbo, I beg, key, open this thing. Sir, you will not even open. You will throw the key at him and run away. Sir, when calamity before your enemy, sir, it is automatic release for you. The Lord will perfect his word in our life in Jesus' name. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast. In war, you will see it as we go. There are always casualties. Some people will die in that side. Some people will die in this side also. Yes, there are always casualties. That is why God was giving them this guarantee. So, but against the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast that he may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Now, this place, some people can confuse it to mean that every israelite is covered some people here can confuse it to mean that every Koremite is covered it is true but it is not totally true yes and i will explain to you why now there is what god sees as an israelite on that night when death will visit Egypt. An Israelite to God is a man, a woman, a boy, a girl that is living or that slept inside a room in a house 
where the doorpost is marked by blood. Do you understand it? Anybody that will not die like an Egyptian. He is a man, a woman, a boy, a girl. That where he sleeps that night, the blood is used to mark the doorpost. Now, in the eyes of God, please pay attention here. Anybody that sleeps in any house, that the blood is not marked on the doorpost, that person is an Egyptian. Any house, any house, that though all of them living there are Israelites, but they did not hear that blood should be used to mark their doorpost. So they didn't mark their house. In the eyes of God, they are Egyptians. Even though to them and to their brethren, they were Israelites. Any house that the neighbor told him, Ha, Bra Samson, see, use the blood to mark your this thing. Oh, eh, Uncle Moses said we should do it. Oh, he said, Don't mind that useless Moses. Wait, see, in Wahala too much. Who sent that order as a message? And he did not do it in his house. He is an Egyptian. Now, a man, a woman, whose household is marked, their house is marked. He now has an Egyptian friend. She has an Egyptian friend. She now goes to sleep and is the firstborn. He now goes to sleep in the house of that Egyptian friend that is not marked. That night, though he is a firstborn Israelite, that person dies as an Egyptian. I don't know whether you get it. You see what God said about Israel and Egypt. So, what we need is that obedience. Somebody, you will not remain in Egypt in Jesus' name. Father, stand to your feet, shout, Father. Whatever will make me an Egyptian, hey, as I prepare for Passover, whatever will make me an Egyptian, Father, remove it from my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, somebody. Pray, somebody. Pray, somebody. Father, let it be removed, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, as I prepare for Passover, Daddy, whatever thing that is in my life, that will remove me that will make me an Egyptian father remove it from my life pray that prayer for your children pray for your children pray for your children pray for your children father remove it oh lord in Jesus mighty name we have prayed sit down God bless you we have God has been so merciful to us in Korem as we come for preparation this evening we always ask is there anybody here who wants to be exempted from this fasting you remember and the person will raise up his hand or hand we say okay why do you want to be exempted he said this and that say, you are free just come to with us and be eating the same food with us and it is free you are breastfeeding a baby you are pregnant under medications because there are some medic I don't know any procurement that is under such medication anyway I, I don't know whether it happened overnight too, but that I know as of yesterday night I don't know any procurement and may you not be under such medications in Jesus name hear me do you know I don't know any human being it's Christian, non-Christian, idol worshiper whatever, that is on hourly medication Eh? that actually survived it. I have not seen yet. There may be, but me I have not seen yet. Because the longer the medications, the more the complications. Praise the Lord. If such a person is here under the sound of my voice, 
please either you come or call now today and you receive your healing today this very day in jesus name i can't hear an amen. amen you know why you didn't shout the amen because there is none here physically present am i correct the lord will bless us in jesus name and all these thy servants shall come down unto me and shall bow down themselves unto me saying get thee out and all the people that follow thee and after that i will go out and he went out from pharaoh in great anger and the lord said unto moses pharaoh shall not hearken unto you imagine just imagine this god was telling him and pharaoh will not answer but go and tell him somebody god is keeping that taskmaster in your life for destruction and that destruction will come upon them suddenly in the mighty name of jesus that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of egypt and the lord said to aaron did all the wonders before and, and aaron did all the wonders before pharaoh and the lord hardened pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of israel go out of his land he waited till that night so they prepared for passover why passover number one passover is for tough battles that normal prayer and fasting cannot solve yes you remember there are battles that normal prayer and fasting cannot solve until god brings an intervention such as this this is god's intervention for koremites he said we should do it every september and to the glory of god the testimonies have always been resounding testimonies have always been resounding somebody your own testimony too will come in jesus name number two the passover is for situations and challenges where all man's effort has failed yes all man's effort has failed he has tried this one he has tried that one many christians are used to this one christians are used to trying this ah if you know how many mountains i have visited for this same problem we always like to have a logbook where we write all the things we have done for a particular ailment a particular challenge say ah hmm. the battle is very strong sir there is no battle that is beyond god none for the first three years after god called me it was the things he could not do i was looking for and i told him that i will go and help you to find what you cannot do because i was looking for a good excuse to run away a very good i just if i not even good excuse any filmsy excuse do you know a friend of mine a pastor he was taking me to pastors i was trying to look for if they can give me a code that will make me to escape the calling let me tell you this funny one one day he took me somewhere in Iju. Iju. that place was inside a gorge like this you understand and the church was there come and see prayer on a wednesday or thursday morning i tell you what wah, wah, wah. Huh? i got there i f i felt sick <laughs> I felt sick. He said, ah, am I going to join these people? <laughs> ah, 
am I going to join these people? And after the program, sir, the prayer I prayed in that place, they were praying it. Me too, I pretended. The by the time I shook my hand like this, and this people want to remove, ah, I, I kept it all. And everybody was just like, after we now met the, the set woman, while ministering, she was telling us that she was attacked. I said, hey, Odabe, <laughs> very good. That they almost killed her. Who? Enemies. Hey. I said, that's very good. So it's, a, it's an excuse for me to run. If enemy can still attack me after accepting Christ, then what am I waiting for? People brought all manner of provisions, tea, what beverages, whatever. In, she had water there. That if you are passing, she has blessed the water inside one big pool. But and cobweb is crossing you. That you should come and use the water to bath. Say okay. Did cobweb not cross Jesus Christ? I was just looking. When I now got to her, she now spoiled the matter. She now told me. I was looking for how to run. You see, why do you want to run from coming into ministry? You see, look at all the beautiful, beautiful things they brought to me. You see, you'll be collecting all these beautiful things from people. Oh, I felt sick. <laughs> Meeting this kind of a person. Encouraging me to be collecting what? Uh, milk. You know? <laughs> I was angry with my friend that took me there. He said, yeah, I should do it. I should not worry. It's very good. I will be making money. I will, people will be showing me. She was praying for them. She, they came to console her for the escaping the attack of enemy what is their faith if they can attack her and she is the one that they say is powerful but I gained something there when I eventually decided to agree to make up my mind and now agree and then decide and then submit I was able to ask questions he said Am I going to be having an attack like those ones? <laughs> that you will be here. And I will be like, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Are you learning something? <laughs> will I be needing somebody to go and bring milk for me and this thing when me too I'm sick and they are putting drip in my hand inside the hospital and I'm, and I'm gasping? Are you going to be there and be watching me do that? Meeting those people helped me to negotiate my relationship with God. It's not because I'm special. It's because I saw those people. And I knew. I thought Jesus was like that. But when I asked questions, I realized Jesus was not like that. They were suffering such affliction because they did not know somebody you know, you will not suffer affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's move on. Passover is for battles that mock your God. The battles that mock your God. That is what Passover is. When things challenges refuse to go Sir. And you are obedient to him. Sir. In fact, challenges refuse to go, check your obedience. That's the truth. When challenges refuse to go, check your obedience. By the time you check your obedience, you will see where the devil is hiding to torment you. And obey. The devil will run. Have you forgotten? Submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and they will flee. 
Now, let's take it again. When you submit yourself to God, you will have the capacity to resist the devil. And the devil will look at you and say, ah, what's wrong with this one? <laughs> this one that wants to resist me. And he will see behind you, your God. He's not running from you. He's running from your God because your God is now behind you. That is it. It is for battles that mock God. When I look at the life of many Christians, many Christians, I see situations that Jesus had paid for over 2,000 years ago. And Christians are still paying for that same thing. Why pay for what Jesus paid for? Sicknesses, the limitations, afflictions of the enemy. All of them we bow now in Jesus' name. Amen. But you check your obedience level. So what now happens? Number four. God now takes over the battles by himself. Takes over the battle by himself. He now begins to direct the attacking forces. Begin to direct the attacking forces. Like Joshua. Chapter number 6. Something happened first of all in chapter 5. From verse 1. God took them to Gilgal. The hill of the first king. This. Seven days of fasting that we are preparing for. It's like that Gilgal. The hill of the first king. It's not convenient. It shouldn't be. <laughs> it's not easy. It shouldn't be. Many of us don't like it. You are not supposed to like it. <laughs> it is the result that you need that will make you to like it. You think it was easy for Jesus Christ to go through the cross. The same place he passed seven days ago that they were laying clothes on the floor for his donkey to ride. Cutting palm fronts for his donkey to ride. The same place he carried the cross and they were flogging him. Just seven days. Seven days. And he will pass there. You will remember how they were shouting Hosanna. Sir. He could throw away the cross and say, uh, Baba Chief Priest, I beg, I beg. Now the Ogogoro where I drink yesterday, now he cost me, I no be Christ, I no child of God. The man will say yes, bow down to me, and he will do it. And say, release him, just make it a go. Now yeah, yeah, boy. But see, he saw a crown. I don't know whether you are seeing a crown. He saw a glory. I don't know whether you are seeing a glory. After this fasting we are going through. And anybody that complains about Korean fasting. Sir, I don't know how to describe that person. The fasting that you can drink water. That you can drink tea. Sir, no, sorry. Sorry. I know places where for four days, six days, seven days, you are not permitted to even drink water. Not to talk of breaking the fast. You will not break the fast for that number of days. I learned of one. They said it is 14 straight days. No breaking of fast. When you have done it for like seven, uh, maybe five or seven days, they are, you are allowed to drink honey. Honey mixed with warm water. They have a glass they use in measuring the honey for you. Are you afraid? Maybe one day I should take you there. Some of us at the gate, some of us will faint. You have not started fasting. When you get to the gate and you read the instruction, you will crash. Praise the Lord. He sends a tough angel to take charge. He sends a tough angel to take charge. Let's take one more. We we'll continue the rest in the evening. Continue the rest. Exodus chapter 23. From verse number 20 to 28. 
Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee on, into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. Why? For my name is in him. Brethren, this journey that we are going into and preparing us ahead this is how we prepare ourselves every year if you go to our youtube channel you will see the one for previous years that we have done but it bears repeating every time you will not miss your own harvest in jesus name i say you will not remain in egypt in the mighty name of jesus stand to your feet tell him father as i prepare for passover we'll be back this evening to do the preparation. You will come with your oil and your salt. Praise the Lord. The camp will open this evening. For those of us who want to come around to bring, I have seen some people bringing their beddings and their uh, nets. You are welcome. God bless you. Now, for those of us who want to come around today, the camp is already open. But officially, it is opening tomorrow. But if you like, you can come in tonight. Are we together? Yes. Hey, I've seen some people bringing their beddings, so you are welcome. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. So, as I prepare for this Passover, Father, let me not fall away in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever will make me to remain in Egypt, Father, remi remove it from my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, somebody. Pray, somebody pray. Pray, 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 pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed, Father. Father. Hey, Father. Every prayer I will raise. In this Passover, Father, answer speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every prayer be followed with testimonies. Yes. Let every request be followed with miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray. Somebody pray. Let every request be followed with principle with miracles. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed, Father. Father, strengthen me for the journey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, pray. Father, strengthen me, strengthen my family for this journey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, that is strengthen me, strengthen my family for this journey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, somebody. Pray, somebody, Father, strengthen me, strengthen my family for this journey. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Do you know the last prayer point? One. Every spirit of Akan in my home. <laughs> Every spirit of Akan in my home. That will make me an Egyptian. Father. Remove it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, somebody. Pray, somebody. Pray. Every spirit of Akan in my home. That will make my home the home of an Egyptian. Hey, Father, remove it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let it be removed, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, Father, help me, O oh Lord. Father, help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The spirit of Hakan, sit down. Let me explain to you. Husband and wife seeking fruit of the womb. Husband and wife seeking fruit of the womb. They now partake in Passover. Throughout seven days, there is no salt, no pepper, no red oil. Husband now get home, maybe to go and dress up for his office. He now see inside the freezer this beautiful uh, oha soup. Eh? That the wife cooked, that they put in the freezer. He said, Ah, chai. He now saw one fufu. He said, Ah, this fufu go waste, oh. He now just quickly put the soup inside the microwave. And then you understand now. So that the soup and the fufu will not waste. He now imbibe. The keg guy talk all over. The keg guys call it imbibe. You know what they mean by imbibe? Drink. <laughs> Chris, uh, Prince, <laughs> you, are a, you are a member of keg guys club. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, he now quickly, you know, uh, let me not say he ate it. 
medical doctors will say ingested. He ingested it. Uh -huh. So he now ingested the fufu and he and he came to church and said, Jehovah is your name. He, he now hold the hand of his wife. That one is <laughs> Sir, that is an account. Praise the Lord. So we, you see now, you say, Father, you say, you are seeking fruit of the womb. Hold your partner. Say, Father, as we stand before you these seven days, is he standing? What about she? Is she standing? <laughs> say, Father, let the baby come. Let the baby come. Let the baby come. They begin to speak in tongues. Every spirit of her can. See, okay, he said, thank God. Me, my own children are even grown up. I don't need a baby now. Abby, that's what you are saying. Wait. Husband and wife, they are praying. Maybe for what? Let's give me an example. Maybe that promotion. Maybe that business breakthrough. You understand? And wife now get home. She now see this, uh, whatever. And, uh, this is the thing where pastor they talk. I'm not going to kill myself. Uh, you, know, you understand? Or... Oh, she reached out. Her neighbor start fight with her. She caused that one so heavily. Fight! As he can't lose in strength now, he can't say, ah, I don't go feel I can't go to church like this. So. Make I quickly use this better soup, okra soup. Take and finish this uh, whatever. Now, so he use them. Sir, now he can't remember say, Chai! Chine, okay. He say, Plus, Jesus my nose devil. I reject it in Jesus' name after eating the food. Now run to church. You now run to church. Sir, husband and wife now hold hands. Say, Father! Our own house this year. Or a child. The parents are praying for your admission. <laughs> University admission. You go, do another thing. Now run down. You are not can. Stand to your feet. Father, every spirit of our can in my home. See, when you say destroy it, it is that spirit we are destroying, not the person. Do you understand? Not the man, not the husband, not the wife. Every spirit of our can in my home. Father, let it be destroyed now in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray. Somebody, pray. Pray. Father, every spirit of our can in my home. Father, let it be destroyed now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let it be destroyed now. Let it be destroyed now. Let it be destroyed now in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hear this last one. Sweet of Akan. When we want to do redeeming my children, now say, eh, we have decided. Let's put maybe 5-5K or 2-2K for each child or 10-10K. Argument, start, start, start. Argument, argument, argument. He say, okay. How much do you want? He say, do. In fact, put it in error. <laughs> you see, upon that argument, you have destroyed the spirit. You have destroyed the spirit of that giving. Upon the argument, even if you now put in ten million, watch against argument in your home. This period, I beg you watch against, in fact, fight against argument in your home. Husband, wife, be foolish this period. Let the miracle come in. I beg you. Let the blessing come in. The Lord will honor his word in our life in Jesus' name. Father, whatever I will do, that we chase your angel away from my house. Father, let me not do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise somebody. Pray somebody. Pray somebody. Pray somebody. Pray. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. 
our Father and our God, we bless your name. Daddy, we thank you because every time we call on you, you are God, always answer. Be exalted, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the feast that you have commanded. Daddy, as we are preparing, prepare with us. Prove yourself in our life. Let any one of us not be an Akan. Let this miracle happen. Father, we glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody want to go.